What does the skin cancer actually look like on the skin? As a derm, people send me pictures all the time, friends, family, and random people on the internet, and ask if this is a skin cancer. Well, today I'm at the Frontier Credit Union in Star, Idaho with my mobile clinic, and we're doing free skin cancer screenings. And today I'm gonna to be taking pictures of the things we see up close and showing you what is benign, what is harmless, and what is cancerous or potentially cancerous. So today's video is all about teaching you what things look like on the skin, good and bad. Now just understand that this video is not medical advice, and just because you have something that you think looks like something I show in the video does not mean that you should not see a dermatologist. If you're concerned about it, you should have it checked out. And I've got other videos on the channel that talk about the things you should be looking for in a skin cancer, but today you're gonna see actual live photos from people that I see in the mobile clinic, everything done with the consent of the patient, and you'll have no personally identifying information. So right off the bat, we started with a pigmented basal cell carcinoma. You can see here in the clinical photo that this spot has pigment in it. It looks a little bit scary. It's a little difficult to appreciate in this image, but it was shiny when I shined my light on it. And when we magnify that image, what you can see is really disordered pigmentation. And then inside we see these arborizing telangiectasia blood vessels and almost a scar-like lesion on the skin. All of these are clues and are highly suspicious for a basal cell carcinoma. The recommendation for this patient would be to go get a biopsy. Spot number two is a firm little bump on the leg of a woman. Now with this bump, when you push on the sides, it kind of indents into the skin. And this is characteristic for something called a dermatofibroma. It's essentially a scar-like lesion of the skin. And they're very common, more common in women than in men, but they can be seen in both. When we look under dermoscopy, this picture shows almost like a scar-like lesion. There's a tiny amount of pigment there around a hair follicle opening, but this is a benign lesion of the skin and we usually don't do anything to treat them. If you want to have them removed, they have to be surgically cut out. So you're trading one type of scar for another, and for most people, it's not worth the trade-off. The next lesion that we're looking at here is a large, scaly brown spot on the back of a leg of the patient. And this had been growing in size over time and had been a little bit itchy. When we look under the magnification, however, we see the scale on top, and based on the look and the feel of this, this is something called a seborrheic keratosis. A seborrheic keratosis is a benign growth of the skin. Some people call them barnacles. I prefer to call them wisdom spots, and they do not need to be treated. Some patients want them frozen off, and they can freeze and go away almost like a wart, but these do not pose a risk to patients. It's usually a cosmetic treatment to have them removed. So the recommendation here is to leave it alone and don't worry about it. The next spot that we're looking at is a mole that was on the arm of a younger woman. Now this mole, when we look at it, it is asymmetrical. We can see that the right side of the lesion is a little darker and the left side of the lesion is smaller and a little bit lighter in appearance. Now based on the age, the family history, and the appearance of the pigment network inside this mole, it's not something that I'm personally worried about. But being on the arm in a sun exposed area, it's the type of thing that's easier for the patient to watch. So the recommendation here is to watch it, but not to go get a biopsy right away. In time, if this starts to change and continues to grow or becomes symptomatic, meaning it itches, bleeds, burns, tingles, then it would certainly be worth doing a biopsy on but the recommendation at this point is to watch and wait. The next spot that we're looking at is another kind of shiny appearing spot on the arm of a woman in her middle age. And with this spot, as we come in close, we can see that it has a small ulceration on it, meaning the skin is fragile and it has broken open. This may bleed easily from time to time, and based on the appearance and the characteristic blood vessels that we see here, again, the worry is a basal cell carcinoma. 
Now, the good thing about basal cell is that they rarely, if ever, spread inside the body. There was a paper that looked at the risk of metastasis from basal cell carcinoma, and they had to generally be very, very large and present for an average of nine years before they would ever spread inside the body. And the truth is that most of them just will never spread inside the body because of what they need to grow. They need that skin environment. So they generally grow where they're planted is the way that I explained it to patients. And with local anesthesia and surgical removal, these are gonna do just fine. The patient will trade it for a small scar. Whether we do a burn and scrape procedure or whether we do an excision and put in some stitches, that's all the treatment that is generally needed on a basal cell carcinoma. I wanna take a minute to thank Frontier Credit Union for supporting the mobile clinic. They are our primary community and corporate sponsor to help make my dream a reality to take free dermatology care to as many people as possible across the state of Idaho. So thank you to Frontier Credit Union for supporting this work. They believe in building healthier communities. The lesion that we're looking at here was on the scalp of an older gentleman who, kind of like me, doesn't have a lot of hair. We can see that there's some ulceration here and this pink white color with lots of weird looking blood vessels spreading out around it. This is something that I would recommend a biopsy on in the clinic and my suspicion is that this could be a squamous cell carcinoma. Now the truth is that most squamous cell carcinomas do not metastasize and spread inside the body, but they do carry a higher risk, in fact a much higher risk, than a basal cell carcinoma. And squamous cell carcinoma does lead to the death of a few thousand patients a year in the United States. So when these appear, we do recommend biopsy and treatment. On an area like the scalp, this would be done with Mohs micrographic surgery, meaning we cut it out in the office and we check it under a microscope right away to make sure that we have clear margins before we put stitches in. That procedure can get a little long for patients. If we find that the margins are still positive when we cut out that first section, we may have to go back and cut a little bit more. And in some cases, this has to go three or four times. I think my record in going back and cutting multiple times are on very aggressive cancers, and I've gone to about nine stages where we have to go back nine times, and of course, at that point, the patient's in the office most all of the day. So these are something that we want to identify quickly and treat before they have a chance to spread inside the body or start growing around nerves suspicious for a squamous cell carcinoma here. Recommendation was to go see a dermatologist and have a biopsy performed. The bump that we're looking at here was a mole on the back of a scalp of a woman and it was very raised. So the size here you can't see necessarily in the image very well but was almost one centimeter, almost half an inch in diameter, and it was raised above the surface of the skin. It's very irritated. Being on the scalp, it gets hit with the comb or the brush regularly. And although we see kind of pigment scattered in weird places in this mole, it was not something that I was particularly worried about that. This is a compound mole, meaning the cells that make up the mole are in the top layer of the skin and in the bottom layer of the skin. This can be removed for cosmetic reasons or if it gets painful because it gets bumped frequently, but I'm not highly suspicious of cancer in this particular mold. The spot that you see here in the more zoomed out clinical photo looks like a skin tag. It's raised above the surface of the skin, it's fleshy. When we magnify it, we can see clearly that it is a mole, and this is a type of mole that is an intradermal nevus. That means the cells making up the mole have migrated down deeper into the dermis, the deeper layers of the skin, and as it does that, it kind of pushes up the skin. And so it seems counterintuitive because the cells are deeper, but the lesion is raised up above the surface of the skin. This is a benign type of mole that poses very little risk to a patient. There was no recommendation for a biopsy here, and these are very common in areas of friction, so this was under the bra strap for this individual. And again, they don't pose a risk, very easy to remove from a cosmetic standpoint if they are bothersome, if they get itchy or they're always rubbing on the clothing, but this is a totally safe mold. I'm back in my office now after the mobile clinic event, and thankfully, none of the patients that I saw today, I was concerned about having a melanoma. So I don't have one of those to show you from the mobile clinic today, which thankfully I'm grateful for. But I didn't wanna close out this video without talking about melanoma and showing you what that can look like. So the first image 
that I have here shows you kind of the different things that we look for, the ABCD rules when it comes to melanoma. And first is asymmetry. And there's an example on the top of this photograph that shows you what normal looks like, and then an example of a melanoma below it. So this lesion is asymmetrical. It is not the same on the left and the right sides, or if we were to cut it up and down, the top and the bottom. Next is border. A round, smooth border is generally good, but on the bad example here on the bottom, the uneven borders where it's jagged and notched is a sign for melanoma. And then multiple colors. Now, the normal mold that we looked at today did have two colors in it, but based on the pigment pattern on the inside, the age of the individual, and the fact that it had been there for a long time, I was not highly suspicious of melanoma and instead chose to watch and wait this lesion with the patient, which they were comfortable with. But in this one, the multiple colors, we see some really dark areas in, and that is more of a clue. And then greater than a quarter inch, greater than the size of a pencil eraser, that is more likely to be concerning than something that is smaller. Now, if we look at some dermoscopy photos, these are the magnified photos that I was showing for most of the lesions that I saw today. I took those with my dermatoscope and just using the camera on my phone. This lesion is chaotic here. We see multiple colors, we see dark areas, and the pigment network is just uneven through it, meaning it doesn't look the same all the way through the mold. Even if it were not different colors, essentially this lesion would be chaotic. And then the last one here, I think if anybody had this on their skin, hopefully they would know you need to get this checked out. This has these peripheral globules, as we call it, and this is a sign that the lesion is growing by itself, in a child, peripheral globules is not a concerning feature if the mole otherwise looks regular. But in an adult, seeing these peripheral globules is very concerning. And probably the most concerning area of this lesion is gonna be the left side, where we see the measurement come across. This blue, white, and gray structures is indicative of regression in the mole, and that means the immune system is reacting against this, and this is a very concerning sign that this is basically a slam dunk melanoma, and we know that before even biopsying it. The biopsy would then tell us how deep it goes and what kind of workup we need to do for the patient. So I did wanna leave you a little bit of information about melanoma before we closed out the video. It is a privilege of mine to be able to go and see patients for free who probably wouldn't be getting into a dermatologist anytime soon otherwise, and we did catch several skin cancers today where these patients can now know for sure they need to go get them checked, they need to have them biopsied, and get appropriate treatment. So this is an important thing that we do and it's something that I love to do. And I hope that you have found this instructional, educational, and also something to help you better identify your own skin lesions when you do self-skin checks at home. When you watch these videos, when you leave comments or share them with others, it helps to support the work that I do here on social media and the work that I do in the mobile clinic to continue to afford doing this for free because I fund it myself with the support of Frontier Credit Union. But the bulk of the expense has been borne by me and that's not a complaint because it's a privilege. I love doing it but I do need to continue to fund it and just watching these videos helps. And if you buy your skincare products, definitely check out the Air Skin Store. That's down in the video description. You will get lifetime discounts on La Roche-Posay, Ulta MD, Isden, and so many other skincare companies who have negotiated discounts for dermatologists and our patients and our viewers on social media. So it's a free account you can sign up for and see the products that I have recommended. Your first purchase is at a discount, but then when you go back to repurchase, you continue to maintain that discount. So thank you for buying your products through the Air Skin Store and helping to support the work that I do on social media. If you guys have questions about skin cancer, leave a comment and I'll try to answer them for you. Have a great day.